Hey, good morning. Happy Friday. Today is Friday. Say this with me. The rest of my life is the best of my life. How do I look? Where is my entourage? Where are those people? One of them is sitting on the porch. The other one is sleeping. One of them is down the street. I need some more people for my entourage. I look all right? Hey, say this with me again. The rest of my life is the best of my life. You start saying that every day and you get to the point where you absolutely mean it, things will start happening for you. Amen? Things will start happening for you. Hey, I want to start a series today. We're going to just kind of open this up a little bit today. And then next week, we're going to get into it more and more. And I'm going to talk about the curse of the law. Facts about the curse of the law, things you probably never thought of regarding the curse of the law. And uh, all this comes from these two books that I wrote. One is called The Blessing. A lot of it comes from this book, The Blessing. Get this book. It's at Amazon. And there was another one called The Blessing and the tithe. These books kind of go together. The blessing and the tithe is, is an extension of the blessing. Is an extension of the blessing. But these are very important books. I believe this book, The Blessing, is one of the top Christian books ever written. Now, I know everybody thinks that the books they write are the most wonderful book that's ever been written. But in this case, it's actually true. It's actually true. Now, there's a, there's a list of great books. Uh, one of the great books is Good Morning, Holy Spirit by Benny Hinn. Uh, the Authority of the Believer by Brother Hagen. Faith and Confession by Charles Capps. The Wonderful Name of Jesus by Kenyon. These are, these are great books. And this book, The Blessing, I believe fits right in there with the rest of them. It's right in there with, with the absolute top books. And The Blessing and the Tithe is an extension of that. But today, I want to talk to you about the curse of the law, fact number one. Some things you probably never thought of now, most of you people who watch these videos of mine, and everybody knows that if you call me on any kind of a regular basis, I require you to watch the videos. That's the only requirement I make for me to be available as a prayer partner with you. And I am a prayer partner with a lot of people and actually personal pastor to a lot of people. And I, but I require that everybody watches the videos every day. 12, 13, 14 minutes tops, you watch these videos, they will increase your faith and strengthen your spirit. And that's why I require that everybody watch these videos. Today, fact number one, if the curse of the law was not operating in your life, you would live in perfect health and become rich very quickly. Let me say that again. If the curse of the law was not operating in your life, you would live in perfect health and become rich very quickly. By very quickly, I mean six months to a year. You would be living in abundance. We were. We were. Now, I want to give you a little background on this. About six years ago, six years ago, Mary and I went through, we made a terrible mistake. Actually, I made the mistake. It's, it was all me. Mary went along with it. 
That was not good for her, but she did. Bless her heart. We thought we had a wonderful opportunity. And it literally cost us everything we had. Cost us our... It just, it just, it was one of those mistakes that we were doing very well at the time. Thought we had a wonderful opportunity to make a change in our lives and it cost us everything we had. And it was an absolute, total, abject failure. Could not have been more of a crash and burn. Just, it was just, now, Mary, being the optimistic person that she is, she says that a lot of good came out of it. Well, some good came out of it, yes. But that doesn't change the fact that it was horrible. It was a horrible experience. The, the, let me just tell you how horrible the experience was. It was so horrible, I hated waking up in the morning when we were in the middle of it when we realized that we had failed. And, and for a while, I hated waking up in the morning because I knew that I was going to be in the same place and the same situation was going on. And I just, it was just, I mean, that's how bad it was. Have you ever been there? Have you ever, you know, people call me and, and they talk to me about their problems and situations not realizing I've been there. I've been as I've been I've been down as down can be, and actually, and I've even been worse off than that. I've been worse off than that, and so I I I was I just I was in a actually, and Mary will tell you this. I was in a rage. I was, I was just literally beside myself. I kept saying over and over. I said, "This should not." happen to God's people. This should not happen to believers. I mean, it cost us everything. It cost us our ministry, cost us our money, cost us our church, cost us everything we had worked so hard for. All gone. All gone. You ever start over? And and I I, I kept saying, this should not happen to God's people. And I was, I just cried out to the Lord. Lord, I know this is not your fault. It was not God's fault. It was mine. And I knew it. I knew it was my fault. I said, Lord, please show me what the problem is. I knew it was spiritual. I knew it was spiritual. And he did. He did. And the result was this book. I realized at that time <clears throat> through a series of events and through where the Lord took me in his word and through the people he had me go to for the teaching on this, I realized that the problem was the curse of the law. I realized it. And, and when, I, when, I, when I came, when I had the epiphany, the revelation that the curse of the law was operating in my life and that that was the reason for all of our problems and for that failure, everything changed. Everything changed. Now, not overnight. We were still in the situation. But I knew what the problem was. So many people don't know what they don't know. They have no idea what is causing all their problems. I did. At that point... When, when I got this epiphany, I was sitting there and I, I said to Mary, I said, you know, honey, I said, I don't know how it got here or, or where it came from, 
But the curse of the law is our problem. The curse of the law is our problem. And I got news for you. If you're suffering sickness, if you're suffering failure and defeat, the curse of the law is your problem too. It's, I'm telling you, the curse of the law is literally alive and well and running rampant in the Christian church. Now, people say, oh, Pastor Jim, we're redeemed from the curse of the law. Yeah, but why is everybody so sick and broke? Why are so many of these people sick and broke? But why are some not sick and broke? What's the difference? The difference is the curse of the law is operating in the lives of most people. Amen. Amen. The curse of the law had literally, and I didn't know it, but the curse of the law had been operating in my life since the day I was born. It was there. It was there. But I'm telling you what, people, it ain't there no more. It is not there anymore. And I went from living day to day, week to week, month to month, to living in absolute abundance. Amen. And nothing can come against me. No weapon that's formed against me shall prosper. I'm telling you what, and I know people say that, but the weapons that are formed against people do prosper. They keep them broke. They keep them sick. They can't keep me broke, and they can't keep me sick. And I will never be broke another day in my life. Because the curse of the law is no more operating in my life. I don't allow it to. I rule and reign in this life. I don't rule and reign over other people. I don't, even, I don't rule and reign over my family. I don't rule and reign over my wife or my dog even. But I rule and reign over the spiritual things that try to come against me. Amen. That's where the ruling and reigning comes in. Not a, not you, we don't rule and reign over people. There's no place in the Bible where God gives anybody dominion over another person. I don't have dominion over any person, but I've got dominion in my life against the forces of evil. That's where dominion comes in. Amen. And I got dominion over the curse of the law. I'm telling you what, there is so much power in the name of Jesus that the curse of the law cannot stand up to it. During this series, I want everybody I'm telling you what, I want every one of my partners to li be living totally free and clear of the curse of the law. I'm going to make sure that the curse of the law is not in your life. And I'm ready to start today. Because it can be broken. It can be broken. Now, you need to stay with this series because the art of war, which was written in the year 500 AD by this Chinese general says... If you know your enemy and you know who you are, you will never lose a battle. And you had better know all about the curse of the law or it will destroy you. And you're going to learn all about it. But if you need the curse of the law broken in your life, you call me today. Hey, I am out of time. Today is offering day for this ministry. When you make an offering, call me. I want to bless your offering at the same time. Tell everybody you know about this series, everybody who is sick and broke, everybody who is struggling. I want everybody to watch this series on the curse of the law. I want to get the curse of the law out of the lives of everybody starting today. Make it a great day. And remember this, God's word will save your soul, heal your body, and pay your bills. Tune in Monday for fact number two.